Hello. Today we're going to talk about is your liver at risk and looking and spotting the signs of fatty liver. So you may have heard about fatty liver. Maybe someone you know had alcoholism and they were discovered to find have fatty liver. It went on to be have cirrhosis and some more other dangerous things like liver cancer. But there is some non-alcoholic route to developing liver, uh, fatty liver that we're going to discuss today. And so first of all, let's dive into kind of the basics. First of all, what is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, right? And so I'll just call it fatty liver from here on out. So it's just a little bit easier. But it's, first of all, it's very prevalent, right? It's kind of a silent condition, right? It affects millions of people around the world. It's even more prevalent now than it ever has been. And basically what it is, it's characterized by accumulation of fat within the liver and in individuals who consume little to no alcohol. It can lead to serious health uh, complications if left untreated, right? And so it's really important to understand what it is and what the causes are and what you can do to manage it. So like I said, it's basically, it's fat that builds up around and within the liver. Um, it can be a uh, range, kind of think of it as a spectrum, right? So you can have uh, conditions ranging from simple, what they call steatitosis, which is just fat accumulation, to uh, the non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NAS, which is basically liver inflammation that can progress to fibrosis or scarring of the liver, and even, like I mentioned, liver cancer. So it's often associated with obesity, especially central obesity, type two diabetes, and what we call metabolic syndrome. And so we're gonna dive into five different causes of fatty liver. So first of all, number one is insulin resistance. And that's again, like you've heard me talk about many times before, is when your body's cells become resistant to insulin. And then higher amounts of insulin are utilized or needed to manage the glucose to get inside those cells. And anyway, there is a process that occurs that this can actually put you at higher risk of fatty liver because not only do your muscle cells and other cells in the body become insulin resistant, but so does the adipose tissue or the subcutaneous fat becomes insulin resistance. Now that fat is not being stored in where it should be and it's being stored in other places like the liver, for example. Next is obesity, right? So excess body weight, um, particularly that central obesity or abdominal fat can put you at increased risk for fatty liver. Metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of conditions, including high blood pressure, high blood sugar, um, excess fat around the middle, around the waist, um, abnormal mm -hmm. cholesterol levels can also increase your risk for um, fatty liver. A poor diet, eating ultra processed foods or what we call refined carbohydrates, right? So these are going to be things like bagels and pastries and things like that, not complex carbohydrates like a plant-based diet, but these are not the way mother nature presented them to us. In addition, you can have unhealthy fats, fats that are very, are saturated fats, um, mostly found in animal products or ultra processed foods, but Sometimes people think coconut oil is healthy for you. It absolutely isn't. It's high in saturated fats and can lead to not only fatty liver, but also um, insulin resistance, prediabetes, and diabetes. Um, a sedentary lifestyle, right? So lack of physical activity can lead to a host of situations, including decreased insulin sensitivity. And again, it is also a risk factor for fatty liver. So how do you diagnose it? Well, first of all, your doctor will do a physical exam, um, may ask you a few questions about your lifestyle. We'll look at your risk factors that some of the things that I just mentioned, then you would do blood tests. So this is one of the things that I was mentioning this week are the labs are your liver function test. And so these are going to be measuring your liver enzymes to see if they are elevated. And that can be uh, indicating liver damage or fatty liver or an inflamed fatty liver, which again, will start pushing towards the NASH that I mentioned earlier. Um, some additional tests would be something like fasting glucose and your cholesterol panel, lipid panel that I discussed in the last few days. If you haven't seen those videos, feel free to reach back over the last few days and watch those. Um, next, we can do imaging studies. Um, really, the diagnosis of fatty liver in, involves not only uh, labs, but also imaging studies like MRIs and ultrasound. And then there's some mathematical algorithm that can be done to actually say, yes, you have this or not. Um, and then to extreme cases, liver biopsy, right? So sometimes that will be required, but most of the time you're, you may be symptomatic or have really high um, liver enzymes 
when we start getting to the point where we need to do some type of very invasive procedure like a liver biopsy. So in conclusion, this is a really serious condition, right? And so you want to understand what the cause is. You want to know how to diagnose it. And then to understand what you should be doing about it is kind of reversing some of those causes, right? Is becoming active, eating more whole food, plant-based diet, weight loss and such. Sometimes people are really struggling like, well, am I always going to have fatty liver? I will tell you, um, I have seen fatty liver reverse itself in approximately three to four months of a healthy whole food, plant-based diet, exercise, stress reduction, better life interventions, habits, things like that. And there's absolute ways to measure to see if that's actually regressing. And it absolutely can happen. I have had a patient as young as 12 years old have reversal of fatty liver. Now imagine if this child had not been taken or parents had taken it seriously and not intervened at such a young age, she would be at higher risk for many of these things in her early 20s or 30s and would have led to potentially very seriously serious health um, outcomes. So I hope you found that helpful. As always, I want to thank you for being here, but please check out my free masterclass on five steps to master your metabolism and lose weight, but it'll absolutely still also help your cholesterol and it can absolutely help fatty liver. And in addition to that, I also speak to the four biggest mistakes that folks make on their weight loss journey. I have helped thousands of people over the decades that I've been a physician to not only improve their metabolic health, but lose weight and do other things as well. So I'm really feel excited that I can be able to share this information with you in the free masterclass. The link is below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Love to have you here. And as always, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here, sending you love, joy, happiness, and peace, and above all healing, because we all need a little bit more of that today in our lives. So hope you found that helpful. And it's a really important topic that, um, I think it's kind of glazed over because it's really silent, but it's very serious, guy. You don't want to tick off your liver. <laughs> so I will hope to see you next time and have a beautiful and blessed weekend. Bye.